Hey, good morning. Welcome to Single Car Garage. Uh, let me show you a couple things that uh, what we're working on and what I'm going to be doing here in just a minute. Uh, when Uber built this uh, 36, this is the support for your hood, the front support. You got a rear support back there. It's supposed to bolt directly to this. This radiator has been lowered. If you will look right there, this should be bolted onto this if it's original which makes this stand up here and you can bolt this to it i'm going to have to fabricate something my first try here is going to be this uh, plate added on to this radiator support and then i'm going to build a tower that comes up and bolts on to that and we're going to see i've got to have plenty of strength in it and I don't want it to move so uh, what I'm actually going to do is do uh, two quarter inch rods square tubing up and then weld a plate that bolts onto this at the top of that so I cut that up last night and uh, I'll be working on it over the next few days I did get my headlight mounted so I need to get it back together and uh, mount the other headlight. So uh, this is, I'm going to actually go out today and look for a plow bolt. It needs to have a round beveled edge like this on the head. So I think I can find a uh, plow bolt that will work. Uh, this particular one uh, that I got for an 8 in Ford but it's not threaded far enough down and I'm not going to thread it the rest of the way. I'm going to uh, find me a bolt that'll fit. Originally your wiring ran up through this center hole, but this one's been adapted. The wiring comes up behind the bolt, so it's not going to hurt anything. So we've got that we're working on and uh, probably sometime in the next day or two, I'll have both these issues uh, tackled. Okay, showed you the uh, parts uh, for the uh, 68 yesterday. Uh, here's the spindles. We got a good coat of uh, chassis black on them. So uh, now we're ready to uh, install them. I had everything installed on this uh, truck already, which I mentioned yesterday, and we're going back and putting uh, updated parts that the owner bought. The uh, To compress it, there's a couple different ways to doing it. I don't have a tool to compress it uh, at the moment, and I think that's something I might want to buy since I do a lot of this. Uh, normally, we have a motor and stuff in it, and your weight will uh, compress your spring down. But uh, I hooked up a tie down to the frame and down to the A-arm and uh, let the A-arm down to where I could take the spindle off. Got the old spindle off. And now I'm ready to put the new spindle back on and uh, tighten it up. Okay. We got the part. We got everything set up. This is let down to the uh, right uh, height to put this thing on. Make sure you got the right side, which is uh, pretty easy. Set it down on the ball joint. Pull it up here and bolt her down. And you got it. All right, now we gotta tighten her up and put our keys in it, and uh, we'll be done. So let's get a wrench and tighten that up. Okay, we got our wrenches. Let's tighten this baby up.
All right, let's get the bottom one now. Okay, we need to get our car keys and uh, put them in, so uh, let me uh, find those. Hey, I'm back. I noticed something. Uh, this kit comes complete, and it has greasable ball joints. The ball joints that we uh, put in this when we were uh, uh, rebuilding it are uh, non-greasable. So uh, I had the uh, get ready to put those uh, uh, car keys in, and I noticed that, and I thought, man, would rather have a greasable one in there. So uh, I'm going to switch it out real quick. Let me go over here and get a second wrench. Hey, I'm back. Needed a second socket to hold this nut. Kind of thought maybe I could do it without having to have this, but but anyway, I thought, well, if this was my car, I would want greasable on it. And they're available right here in the kit, so we will take this new ball joint out and we'll put another new ball joint in. But I think greasable is definitely the way to go. And uh, it comes already painted, which is a good thing. There we go. And we'll drop this thing right in here and get it bolted down. Then we'll be ready to complete the job. When you're uh, putting these uh, ball joints on, make sure you uh, use your lock washers. You want to make sure you get them tightened down real good. Now, I've already ran these down. Actually, I've actually tightened them. And something that I do uh, when I do front end work, I'll go out and put about 500 miles on the car and then I will come back and uh, recheck it. I was looking on uh, Facebook the other day and a gentleman posted, he lost his uh, castle nut off his ball joint and he was in a Walmart parking lot. It came apart, fell down on the ground pretty easy fix for him to get it back up and going. But, uh, you know, I, I would imagine he either lost his Carter key or maybe he didn't have a big enough one in there. I, I would imagine that he lost it, did not put it in there. Uh, one of the two. It was a pretty fresh build. It's been built about a year ago. Those things happen, and that's when you're doing front-end work, when you're doing any work, what you want to do, work slow, work right, and then... Uh, move on and that way you won't be coming back and uh, repairing something that's broken but we got that in so uh, let's finish up the job and we will come back and uh, check our torque specs uh, this is 40 All right, got our torque spec set. We've got a grease circ in. Now we're ready to do this one more time. Let's put our uh, Carter key in this bottom, since we can get to it a little bit easier at the moment. And then, uh, 
we'll get this set up here and once again push that in here and our net on And let's tighten that up and we'll be ready to go. Okay, we got uh, everything in a couple things. Want to make sure you're always using hardened bolts on your ball joints. Now, usually your ball joints come supplied with them. But if you buy a set of, out of a flea marker or something, uh, make sure I always use grade eight. Uh, make sure you torque everything down we got our castle nuts on. We've got our Carter keys in. Everything turns good. Now you want to get this thing greased up before you start uh, moving around a lot. You can actually forget. It don't take long to damage a ball joint if you pull this thing out on the road and take it down the road and back. So the next thing we want to do is uh, go ahead and put our... Uh, our spindle on, all right, spindle on. Well, it's time to pack the bearings. This is kind of the old school way of packing them. Down the way I taught, but uh, put your grease in a Ziploc bag. Now they make a tool for this. Uh, Never taking the time to buy it. And you just squeeze the grease in the bearing. Now the other way of doing it, which is extremely messy, you can put a dab of grease here and you'll see the old timers feed it in that way. Uh, that little cup, uh, I've used it. It does a good job. I've just never uh, taken the time to buy one. Um, I try to do it the least messy way, and this seems to be the least messy. So I uh, work it all in the bearing real good. I'll also put some grease on the spindle. We'll put the rotor on there, and then we'll be uh, good to go. This is the back bearing. You've got to put it on. Uh, prior to uh, installing it because you got to put your dust seal on and you want to make sure you put your dust seal on if not you'll get dirt in your bearing and mess it up so get your uh, bearing good and packed go ahead and get your front bearing good and packed and uh, then you'll be ready to uh, install these so Let's get the rest of the parts so we can get this done. Here I'll show you the uh, the old timers way of doing it. Take a dab of grease, put it right there in your palm. Then you slowly work this around. And then what it does is squeeze it up in the uh, bearing. You want to keep doing this. You'll go around three or four times to get it all stuck up in there real good. You'll want to come back and do it on the top side. And you just want to keep working it in there. Take your excess out, put it back in your palm, and work it in there again. I really, in all honesty, prefer the uh, the Ziploc bag method. I don't know why. It's just my thing. But maybe I'll buy one of those uh, that you hook your grease gun up to. And I won't have this mess to clean up when I when I do it the old school way. 
The Ziploc way uh, it does waste a little bit of grease. And by the way, I use Vaveline, multi-vehicle high temp grease in my bearings. So uh, now we got these greased up, uh, let's put this uh, rotor on. Let me get it. Okay, you put your back bearing in. You want to put your dust seal in. You'll need a rubber mallet for this. Just place it where it needs to be and slightly go around very slowly. It's nice and flush fit, good to go. Perfect, that'll stop the dust. Okay, we've got everything ready. Put this on. Here's my uh, front bearing, which I'm gonna stick right there. And uh, let me get a paper towel keep this clean. Okay, we're ready. Let's go ahead and uh, ease up the uh, pressure and take this off. I'd forgotten left it on a while ago. There we go, we got that off, out of the way, comes a rotor, easily slide it on, there we go, front bearing, I want to put a little bit of grease in here also. Now I know this is wasteful, so they tell me, but uh, I like that extra grease, makes me feel a little bit better. Put that in. Our set washer here. Let me clean it off. Slide that on there. Then our castle nut. Now what the instructions tell you on this is uh, tighten it down until it doesn't turn. Your hub. And then back it up. Make sure you get all your grease cleaned off. I'm trying to keep my garage floor clean. This building's a year old and uh, I've been mopping it, dusting, sweeping. I've never kept a garage as clean as this one, but I, this is the last garage I'll have 
and I have vowed to keep it clean and dust free. Uh, body work we do all outside. Within the next year, we're going to build a uh, body work building. Uh, or just where I live in Tennessee, I have good enough weather all winter long to work outside. Maybe not every day, but I have uh, a lot of 70 degree days. Roll a car out, do all the sanding, body work, and stuff. Now I will do fab work uh, inside the shop. I mean, you can't keep a shop perfectly clean. There's still a lot of dust and stuff. I can wash a car and three days uh, it'll be dusty again so we need to get a car key for this I'll be right back okay it's time to put the uh, brake caliber on so I actually already have it placed up on there if you notice these are a little bit the uh, your uh, outside Your bolts fit through. Hey there, here's I got a helper here. And your inside, of course, has your clip. Place it down over there. Get them lined up and you're ready to go. You have it on. Here comes another helper. This is Max. The last helper you've seen was Katie Kate. Katie Kate's a border collie. Rescue. Uh, I've been rescuing dogs for years. Max here. He's 13 year old boxer. Still pretty good shape. Uh, see some scratches on him. He got uh, tangled up with some coyotes a few weeks ago. Unfortunately for the coyote, uh, I have a pack of five dogs and two of them are killers. So uh, one coyote didn't make it away. And I hate that for him. Mike's been a good dog. Like I said, 13 years old. One of the better minded dogs I ever had. And he loves to come get in the middle of everything. So. I happened to open the garage door a minute ago to see who what was barking or what they were barking at. And uh, all right, there we go. Everything's hooked up. Max, watch out, baby. Come on, come on, come on. Go on, go on, go, go. Out, out. Come on, out. Go on, out. Go on. All right. Harden bolts when you put in your uh, ball joints. Pack your grease good in your bearings. Your dust seal on. Caliber on. Now we're ready to go over the other side and do the same thing. Um, this is a drop spindle. So it's going to lower the truck a little bit. We're ready to go over and repeat the process on the other side. Once we get that done, we will put on all our tie rod ends, center links, and all that good jazz. So our front end will be together. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So, hey, thanks for joining me this morning and uh, putting uh, this side on. We'll go to the other side. And like I said, one of the reasons we're replacing this is the owner... Of this truck decided to go a different route after we had everything done and I think as I told you all yesterday uh, some of the charges from the first install uh, I'll eat that labor uh, just to make him happy and not overcharge him on uh, doing this front end so uh, you know my first one I cleaned up all the a arms and painted everything painted the frame and got everything ready so uh, that I'll still charge him for, but uh, bolting everything together, I probably won't. So we will we'll go to the other side and finish that up. I probably won't uh, video that since you got this video. So I will see you when I'm ready to do the tie rod ends and all that good stuff. Uh, everybody have a great day. 
I'm going to get some more work done. See you later.